I hope they have started the tape machine out there because they, we do not have the music here. Uh, Scott, if one of you out there listening to this, would you please let us know if you're ready to be having it taped? You're Steve One. Come let us know. Wait another minute. <coughs> They've had they've checked it all out. Let's get started okay. here again. Let's see what we do. Okay, we're gonna start the session. I'm your moderator, Bob Van Antwerp. And the panel is going to be called talking about teaching for fun classes. Or we could say really having fun while teaching classes. As your moderator, I am going to try to tell you some things that we will expect and hoping it will fall true as your moderator. I hopefully will have you nudge your partner next to you if you see that person napping. But I think in the long run with the temperature in the room we won't have to worry about that. Also, I am attempt to keep the subject on track. If we start to stray, I will try to bring it back. We will allow all of you participants to speak and give you the opportunity, but we will not permit you to actually hog the mic for any length of period of time. Now, we will also say that we as a panel are not non-airing. We may have problems, but uh, we will try to indicate to you the fun that we do with our classes. We will try to conclude with some kind of discussion if we have the time. We are attempting, as we said before, to get music available because we will use some music in our presentation as the two gentlemen we have here will make presentations. We will hopefully find this session beneficial to you and we will expect also from some of you who will take the mic to give us some suggestions for everybody's knowledge as well. I might add that it is imperative, since this is being taped, that you will please come to the microphone, give us your name and the state or where you're uh, from. That way we'll have it on record and you can buy the tape and take it home so you can hear yourself on tape that way. This session is kind of a fun session for us. We urge you to speak to us, disagree if you so desire, but let us hear from you as we give you the time. Now both of our presenters are, are very well qualified and we will ask them to each give approximately a 20 minute presentation. I will give some additions into that and the next thing will be your opportunity to come forth and speak us, ask questions, whatever you'd like. Our first speaker comes from Vancouver, Washington. His name is Jim Hattrick. Uh, Jim started dancing when he was 12 years old. A long time ago, wasn't it, Jim? and has called for 28 years. The past 18 years has been on a professional basis. He's recorded on Chinook Records. He calls for four clubs, all the way from basic to A2. He's a member of the Willamette Callers and Cure Association, and his wife, Judy, is she here? Judy, where are you? Glad to have you with us, Judy. So let's give an eye to Jim Hattrick. Jim? Thank you, Bob. Uh, before I start, what I'd like to ask all of you, are you all having a fun time this week at the convention? Are you? It's good. The next thing I'd like to ask you is, what's the reason for having that fun? Can you define it? Can you tell me what is the most fun for you? Because winning money? <laughs> well, that's good for some people. Not everybody's done that. <laughs> But, you know, that's the thing I found difficult with this when, they, when it was presented to me is that word fun. You know, what is fun? How do you define fun? I think everybody in this room probably has something different, uh, what fun means to them. So let, let me back up a minute. How about coming here? If you were to pick out what's fun about this trip, some people, the airplane trip was probably the most fun. Never been on an airplane before. Maybe some people, it was the uh, entertainment last night we went to. Maybe it's the meals we're having here. Maybe it's the information in all the meetings you're getting. Maybe it's the people you're meeting. Or maybe perhaps it's the casino and the gambling. 
See, and what I'm getting at is fun to everybody is a little bit different. And so to define that and to some, all of that's fun. To others, just the gambling is fun. Just the meetings, just the airplane trip. So then I, so you have to take a little bit farther and find out, you know, what are we talking about? How are we going to make and relate this into lessons and how are we going to give people a fun time? How do we make lessons more fun? So then I thought, well, what do I do about fun? So I went to the dictionary. Um, it was one of my first times to go to the dictionary for information, but I found out how to look up fun. And in the dictionary, Webster's Dictionary says, fun is merriment, hilarity, and sport. Something that provides enthu- uh, amusement and enjoyment. Playful, often boisterous action or speech. Does that all fit to square dancing? Do we get boisterous at times? Some people like that. Sometimes they don't. I don't know. It depends if they're yelling at you or with you, I guess. Um, one thing, how about sport? Is square dancing related to sport? Is there winners and losers? I think there probably is in some cases. And I hope we have more winners. And I hope we have all winners and no losers. Best sport in all. Everybody should be able to win. We're on the same team. I, I relate fun to this, too. You know, like a person that likes gambling. In fact, it hit me last night. Some people in here like gambling. Some people don't. Let's take those that do like gambling, all right? My wife likes gambling, and I don't like gambling, really, to be honest. I don't like losing money. It, it hurts me a lot. But last night we went and gambled, and I sat at a blackjack table, and I won $30. You know something? That was fun. <laughs> it really was. So I looked back and I said, gee, I didn't like gambling, but, but it was fun last night. What made it fun? I won. I won. You know what? My wife didn't have much fun last night. <laughs> and after she told me, I, my fun wasn't quite as much either. Because the 30 I won, she was losing around the corner. So anyway, fun, to, again, I think you can kind of group it down into winning. And so what I'd really like to talk about is how do we win? How do we let the dancers win? How do you know, stay ahead that way. That's kind of where it is. Um, Take callers, for instance. If most of us in here are callers, and if we're callers, I hope that we all enjoy calling and have fun calling. When you call a tip and your timing is off and you, the square's all fouled up and you can't get anybody to do anything, do you have as much fun? You didn't win, did you? we got to keep thinking winning. we got to think, how did we do that? Music sounding better all the time. And, uh, <laughs> and so what we as callers think sometimes, though, is fun is not what the dancer thinks is fun so the next step I took in preparing for this is is I went to my class I've got a class going right now so this isn't a wide uh, spectrum of, of a survey I took my dancers and I gave them a questionnaire and um, what I did in that is in hoping maybe you find a new way to come up to do something or whatever but give me an idea what and so I let the dancers give me input and I think we need to do that more I found out some things that eh, weren't a whole lot new but I did find out some new innovative things that I didn't realize was maybe the most positive thing to have people have fun so I've got some new things I'm going to start working on and I'm going to pass those on to you today and new ideas is good because in fact I, I saw a new idea the other day I was driving down the road and uh, I looked beside me and a chicken I was doing 50 miles an hour and a chicken passed me running down the road. Have you ever had a chicken pass you on the road? That was something new to me. So my eyes up a little bit, and then I looked closer, and that chicken <clears throat> had three legs. You ever seen a three-legged chicken? I hadn't either. So I sped up a little bit, and I followed that critter, and he turned in a driveway and went right into this farm yard. And I pulled in there and asked the farmer, I said, did you see that three-legged chicken come in here? And he said, I sure did. And I said, well, didn't it surprise you? No, those are mine. A three-legged chicken? He says, yeah, we found that people like drumsticks. And so we, we went and worked with chickens. We've learned how to make a three-legged chicken. And I said, well, gee, that's great. How do the chicken legs taste? He said, I don't know. We never caught the bugger. But anyway, so you never want to worry about <laughs> Try new things, you know. But don't get too innovative. They don't work and you can't catch them either, okay? Let me show you kind of what happened on our survey. What, what I did is in... Uh, with my classes, I wrote up a little survey, and basically I said this survey is to assist me in a panel that I'm going to be doing at Color Lab, and to help show people about teaching for fun classes. First question was, how long have you been dancing? And they range from three months to five years, ten years, whatever was there. Angels too had answered this. Describe fun. Just describe that. What did you like best about square dance lessons? 
was do you like patter or singing calls better? Um, was the transition from class to club an easy one? What suggestions could you make to make square dance lessons more fun? And what keeps you coming back every week? That's what I asked them, just down to basics. And what I thought was really interesting, my boy, he's 10 years old, and he square dances. And I, and I couldn't pass this up. I didn't know he was filling out one, but he did. And as I read through it, I figured out who it was because he signed it at the bottom. And he's been dancing for three and a half years. What did he like best about square dance lessons? Graduation. Uh, does he like singing or patter? He likes singing calls best. Um, was your transition from class to club an easy one? Yes, my dad taught. What suggestions do you make to make lessons more fun? Now, this is a 10-year-old, and his suggestion was to have more tag dances. How many here don't know what a tag dance is in square dancing? What a tag dance is, if you've got kids' classes or singles' classes, kids' classes really love it. You've got more girls than you do guys. You form your squares, and then those that aren't dancing go out and stand behind, say, girls, okay? Here's a girl standing behind a girl. Whenever you promenade, when you get home and somebody's standing in your spot, that girl leaves, that girl steps in. That girl must go to another couple's position. That's a tag dance. Out you go, in I come. Next promenade, out, and in they go. Very easy transition. Kids love it. There's, a, there's that. And what keeps you coming back every week? My parents bring me. So I thought it was kind of... <laughs> so that comes from my own, my own boy. So then through this survey, what I found out from this is what people... Breaking it down this way first, what, what they like best about square dancing and fun as it relates to square dancing. Okay, let's group those two together. And what we found is what people like are meeting people, dancing with everyone, uh, people so nice, this is kind of in their own words, just dancing itself. I like dancing. Uh, the way the caller taught it, learning new things, laughing at mistakes, the caller, friendly teaching, music, exercise, challenge and mastery of moves, and then this last group is just, uh, they like the beginner lessons, I mean the beginner dances, not being jerked around, the good environment, the treats, I guess I meant breaks by that, uh, being relaxed, it's a way to get rid of tension, something to do as a couple. How many people, husband goes hunting, but she does uh, crocheting or whatever, you know, and they never do, I don't like that, and she don't, you know, so that kind of thing. Uh, doing moves correct, a lot of people like, that was what's fun to them when they can do a move correct and not drinking. Now when I boil those all down, the first one, meeting people, let's put the people aspect, that came in with thir uh, 29%. Teaching the moves in that was about 18%. 11% like dancing, 8% like laughing at their mistakes, 5% uh, the caller, 5% friendly teaching, 5% music, 5% exercise, 3% the challenge of mastery, and the remaining 11% were all those other things, the beginner lessons and so on and so forth, okay? So I took those and I grouped those down into three major groups. What are we talking about now to have fun? Number one is dancing, the caller, and the people in the organization. You got three things that we're looking at now to, how can we make those fun? And, uh, and surprising as I added it up, 33, 33, and 34%. People won out by 1%, if this survey means anything. And I think it's gonna work out that way pretty close all. What can we do then as far as the people? Now we're going to get down to how do we make lessons more fun as a caller? What can we do? We're talking about the people. If you were my dance, what can I do? I recommend that you're at the door, get there early and be at the door and greet those people. Be their friend, not their caller. Friend first, caller second. Hi, George. Hi, Betty. Hi, hi. How are you doing? Jeez, your job. Doing, you, know, you talk to them, you find out what their concerns are and you can be more personal with them. How about during breaks? Coffee breaks, in between tips, visit with them. I, I like people, and I hope you do too, and I'll start here and I'll work my way around and I will meet and I'll talk and say hi to people. How about after the dance? Do you, do you have a star tip at the end of the dance? Now I'm really working hard in my clubs to get rid of star tips because I think it's more important for me and the club members to be back at the door to say goodbye as well as saying hello to people. You know, they are people and, and they like to be acknowledged. How about learning people's names? Do you know what the one word that people like to hear more than anything else is? Their name. She likes to be known as, what is your name? Grace. Isn't that better than saying the girl down here in the red? 
wouldn't it be nice to say, Grace down here I had an opportunity to visit with earlier. You know, I didn't but yet, but I will. Talk with you later, Grace. And, uh, but names. If you can't remember the names when you're visiting with them, and I go down here and I visit with Joe, I'll remember Joe's name, and when I'm calling the tip, it's very easy for me to find something in that tip to maybe acknowledge Joe by name. In the next tip, I'll find somebody else's name and acknowledge them by name. Do you think that'll make them feel like the most important person there? Sure does, and, and everybody else knows them too. Great way. Names. Think about that. Work on getting names to have more fun. Um, and then when you do acknowledge names, don't ridicule people, okay? Now, there's a fine line there. There's sometimes you can joke with somebody, okay? Uh, well, well, like Joe down here. You know, for instance, he's got that rip in his shoe right down there. Well, that's okay. You know, if he doesn't mind that rip in his shoe, but maybe we shouldn't mention it to him. If somebody's petty pants fall off, should we acknowledge that or not? Well, there's a lot of times I call and a laugh, okay? That's what I'm looking for, a smile or a laugh. And I've had somebody's towel fall off their holder before. And you say, oh, uh, somebody's penny pants just fell off over here. You know what the whole floor does? Holy smoke, squares break down, people start looking, and then they start laughing because they're just there, just a towel, that's all. Whatever, you've got to be spontaneous. Um, visitations on the list. They said visitations. I think as a caller, go with your visitations. It'll make your dances and lessons. Now, I'm talking lessons. When you go on lessons, you should go on visitations to other lessons, to other new dancers' dances. That'll make them more fun. They'll learn better. Um, learning new moves. Um, basically there to make lessons fun is do them in the right sequence for Pete's sakes. Don't teach a scoot back before you've taught turn through and fold. Okay? If they know those two moves, it's sure a lot easier to learn scoot back. Otherwise, you're talking about three moves in one. Makes lessons a whole lot easier and a whole lot more fun. Um, you know, one thing some people said is teach people to get in a line. We as teachers need to do that. People don't have fun standing out there fouled up, and the longer they stand, the more they know everybody's looking at them, the lower they get, and they wish they could just hide and pull off the floor. So to have fun, keep them dancing, teach them to get in a line so they can get dancing right away again. How about at lessons? Uh, is there a way to split the experienced people up, the angels, to help you out? I think we've forgotten in a lot of cases in dancing to have a couple. My wife and I go over to that couple and say, hey, how about me taking your part and you take my part? And away they go. Will they dance easier? Will they, by dancing easier, will they win? And by winning, will they have more fun? That's the key. And if you have angels there, I say you sit down and have a talk with them and say, listen, this is our class. We want them to have fun and we're going to have fun by making them dance. Okay? If that doesn't work for you, you do, gotta, you do have to think about Mixing. Mixing is the key to lessons. That's what helps them learn, inexperience and experience. So, um, so what dancers, I think, are really saying to us is, will you help me, not hinder me, because I want to dance like you dance and have fun. That's what they're saying to us in a silent way. Okay? So what can a caller do to help in that fashion? You know, the mixing and stuff. Um, one thing that I do, and it works out really well, is there's computer boards you can use. How many of you have not seen a computer board sort of thing? You know the numbers? Use those. People may squawk a little bit, but I find once they get used to it, they love it. And once they start mixing, they like that really well. Number two <coughs> um, is the tag dance I mentioned, if you got singles, and I explained that already to you. Circles are a super way to learn. If you want to have people have fun, the main reason a fair square fouls up and they're not going to win and succeed is because they're in a square with, as uh, Mike's, of course, he said the other way, they, uh, Bobby, dead brain, something like that. And uh, brain dead, that's what it was, wasn't it? But anyway, so they're in that square and they're going to have to live with it the whole tip. In a circle, it's a matter of if couples are facing, one pass through, you've eliminated your problem and sent it to somebody else and you're on your way to dance better. And if that doesn't work, two ladies chain, you got rid of your other problem, your partner. And another pass through, you've gotten rid of her completely, or him, either way, and so on. And you can bring them back. And everybody, how about speed of teaching? Do you realize if you're not in a square and you're in a circle, you can learn twice as fast? Because the heads don't have to watch the sides, and the sides don't have to watch the heads. Everybody can do a right and left through, and everybody can do a pass through, and everybody can do it, and everybody, and so on and so forth. So you have more fun that way, because you're succeeding. And one couple doesn't miss, then you move on to the next, and it's working again for you. Progressive squares. Have you had that situation where that square right over there is not dancing very well? 
Now, how can I nicely, and keep the fun in this, get that square, that couple, there's two couples in there having trouble, get them out of that square without saying, uh, George and Betty, uh, you get over here because you ain't doing worth a darn, and you come over here, you know. That's about the way it sounds if you help them do that. If you use, think progressive squares. How many here do progressive squares? Anybody? Okay. Progressive squares, there's two ways to do it. You can move people around the square and bring them right back where they started. Is that the way most of you do it? You can progress a square and never bring anybody back to anywhere. All right? A quick line of four. You don't even have to line the floor up. You can just say pass through, look ahead if you get somebody's attention, and ladies chain. Those who can't, California twirl, rest pass through. Got a new square. Oh, we sure do. And if that didn't work and they're still in trouble, do it again. And do it again. And people are mixing and, and they love it. People like to dance with other people. They told us that in my survey. Okay? Fun. Dance with everybody. It's infectious. Um, another thing we need to do in lessons, <clears throat> how many times have you learned to move, let's say in, in your dancing, and you've gone out and the caller where you go has decided to teach a move also, same move that you already know, and after he's done talking about it so long, you no longer know how to do that move. Same thing in lessons. If you're going to talk, I'm a big believer, I run music almost all the time. When you put it, they want to dance. They don't want lectures. Talk less, dance more. Don't give lectures. This is a lecture, that's fine. We're going to give you a talk. But if you're here to dance, I'd have you in a square, and I'd have you moving right away. There's many, many moves. You don't need any explanation. Square dancing is meant to be more or less very easy, so you can have fun. Dancing, that's what they came out for, enjoying the people and dancing. We don't have to get real heavy on that. <clears throat> more talk, the more confusion less fun. In fact, if you put that in mathematics, it'd be confusion plus talk equals less fun. That's just kind of where it's at. Let's dance. That's what they're there for. Um, one thing they did say is, in fact, percentage-wise, 76% of the people in this survey wanted more singing calls. More singing calls. And, if, and in fact, I, have, I advise all of you partners of the callers Figure out the percentage of how much patter you're doing to singing calls at your next dance, your next lesson, whatever. And see if you're giving the dancers what they want. And then ask your dance. You may have a club that wants patter. Mine said they want singing calls. Let's, let's get to the rhythm. Let's dance. That's where I have fun. Okay? So, so using that, um, <clears throat> I do a singing call after each tip. Each tip. Make sure that patter's short enough. Do a singing call. That's, that's the reward. They want that singing call. Uh, don't make tips too long. I think if you've gone 20 minutes, that's a maximum. You should go on a tip. Try to put your feet in their shoes and see if you enjoy 30 and 40 minute tips. As a caller, we get so involved in our choreography sometimes, and I'm just as guilty as the next. All of a sudden, he looks at, oh, really? Is it time to quit already? I mean, to go home? Two hours? <laughs> no break. Um, how about lively singing calls versus pretty singing calls? What do the dancers like more? You know, I can't really say here, but if you put on a record with a lively beat to it, do you like moving to that better than you do a lullaby? I think they do too. doesn't mean that we have to have all lively ones, but we do need life, spark. That's where dancing's at. Is that thing working yet? It's, it's, oh, okay, good. Good, good, good. Um, how about changing figures and singing calls? I think we got a degree there. Uh, beginner lessons, I don't think we should change fingers. Okay? Not at all. I don't think we should change partners in the first four or five lessons. They're there to dance, not to be confused. I want them to, when I say swing your partner, if they're in the wrong spot, they'll look around and say, uh, there she is. <laughs> She'll go right over to her and he'll swing her and they'll promenade on home. And the next time it'll be better. And also make those singing calls very simple. We want them to have fun. Don't show them how smart you are. Show them how good at dancers they are. That's the key. Um, change part, uh, like I said, don't change partners in the calls. Um, also what I'm doing in my lessons now is I'm dedicating, there's four, let's say four Tuesdays in a month on my Tuesday night class. Every third Tuesday is a dance. <coughs> Old dancers come, new dancers come. It's a dance for everybody. Everybody's equal, everybody squares up, and we do it at the class level, period. So they have three lessons learning, one lesson to dance. 
But I think in lessons we, we, we put too much emphasis on learn, 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 learn. Where's the end of the tunnel? Not yet. Learn, learn, learn some more. Do we ever get to dance? No, not yet. Learn, learn, learn. Okay? It, that happens. They want to know, when can I dance? So now I reward them every third week with a dance. Maybe some little simple round dance mixtures. Whatever. Make it as much like a dance as you can. So what we're saying, if I were to summarize this sort of up, is we need more singing calls. We need less talk and more calling. When you put them on the floor, don't make them stand there and listen to a lecture. Don't get too deep into the moves. We're the ones that need to know how the moves go. They just want to dance. That's all they want. They just want to dance. Emphasize fun dancing, not learning. I think that's what my dance on the third Tuesday of every month does. And by the way, you're all welcome to come. That is at uh, from 7 to 8.30 at Hazeldale Grange. And, uh, but anyway, so I hope to see you all there. And uh, let's see. Be friendly. Be a friendly caller with all. How many times have you been, in fact, think about this weekend, for the, rest of this, for the rest of this week, when you're visiting with somebody and a strange face pulls up beside you, take a moment to acknowledge that person at least. Don't block them out. We're all callers. We're all here to meet people. Boy, what a great place to meet everybody in the country. Dancers are the same way. I had a, a one deal, and I didn't bring it today, I had a sign on this person. I had him stand there and two people were visiting. And after I said, ignore him. And they did. They ignored him. And then I had him flip the sign over, and the sign says, Look at me. I'd like to join your class and dance with you forever. If they had visited with him, he would have probably joined them. But if you ignore them, they could be out the door and you'll never see them again, too. So look at the person in the corner that nobody's talking about. You're the caller. you got the biggest, most important role of all of being friendly. And I don't hold it beyond myself to go to a club member and say, Bob, you need to start visiting with people. I want you back at the door, okay, because it's our club. You can do that with your club members. They just have, oh, you know, I have forgot that. Hug and therapy is something that's very contagious. Our club has a lot of it in one of them. I think more need that. Uh, if a square is having trouble, move them. Be aware. You're the caller. If they're in trouble, don't leave them back there suffering for a half hour. That isn't fun. Because if you're a side caller, you might be watching this one and their four others are fouled up. That's not fun. Okay? You've got to keep them dancing. Okay, yeah, I was going to use it right now. Or do you want me to wait? Oh, okay. So I'm going to give you a couple ideas. Uh, I talked about progressive squares. You can just scatter, promenade people and stuff like that. But what kind of things can we do as a caller on the stage? And I just, I just started running through my mind several things. If one of them works for you, use it. If it doesn't, throw it aside. It doesn't work for everybody. A lot of these are things you've already used. How many times have you said, head square through, and you say, how many? And they say, three or four. Could be right, could be right. Doesn't matter. But you got crowd participation, didn't you? I think that can add fun. Just a little element of fun. You can do it in lessons. How many times have you said, um, Ferris, leave the wheel off. Flutter, leave the wheel off. Let them do that part. Flutter, Woo! they'll do that. They'll fill all that in for you. Let them be involved. They want to do that sort of thing. Another one that works kind of good is through. Do you know how many moves have through after it? So why don't you have the dancers, and I, I did it one night just by accident, and now I use it once in a while. It's like in lines of four, and you say, everybody do a right and left, and they go through, star, through, pass, through, you know, and so on and so on. You keep getting them going with that through kind of thing. You do it right here, right and left, through, star, through, pass, through, partner trade, star, through, right and left, through, Alaman, through, no, left. And you get them in the mood, but they still are participating and a little thing like that. They'll get it, but they'll have fun doing it. That works for you? Use it. Um, how about having them squared up and say um, square through four? Just wait. Somebody will holler, hmm, and you just say, well, whoever wants to, because it works either way. Or prettiest two square through or whatever you want. That, that's kind of a fun thing. I'm sure you've used those. Face your corner and say, don't overuse any of these things, though. You know, I mean, I've seen guys say every tip, face your corner and say this. Face your corner and say this. I think it's old. How many here, I'm not even going to ask you to vote on this, yellow rock? I see a lot of people use that for fun, but what happens with that is that I've had a corner once in a while that I didn't want to yellow rock. Have you ever had that situation? And I don't want to put people in that situation. That could be a negative fun. If you want to hug somebody, go ahead. In fact, right now, you all go hug whoever you want. Nobody wants a hug in here. That's okay. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, so a couple ideas. How about in lessons? Uh, reach in there. Would you bomb get my records out of there? I'm going to show a little bit of this. If we have time to the end, I won't be able to get through all these right now. I just don't don't shuffle them either. <laughs> Okay, how to have fun with singing calls. Okay, songs in your lessons. So I don't lose my place. One I have a heck of a good time with. And that is, you say, tonight we got three guys that have been practicing, or girls or whatever, and they're going to come up and they're going to sing along with me. Have you ever heard the song called, I searched the world over and thought I found true love. You met another and you were gone. Have you heard that one? There's one out and it's called, it's on K-Lox. And I hope I find the worst singing people in that whole hall. Because this is for fun. You make this figure very simple so everybody can dance it. And you put them behind. And what I've done on my cue sheet here is in red, I put right here. This is what you're going to sing. And they're up there wondering, what am I going to do? What am I going to say? You're going to sing this when I point to you. Where, oh, where are you tonight? And then I'll do swing the corner promenade, blah, 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 blah. And then they come in with us. Oh, and I've gotten the craziest responses. And you put some crazy hats on them and stuff like that. They become the stars. The people like them. You know, and they're dancing. Fun. Again, I've created a laugh or a smile. How about Elvira? Uh, Tony does this, and that's where you get people remembering what you're saying. Memorize what you're doing. Head square through. How many? Four. Make a right hand. Star. Left hand. Star. Into the middle. Uh, veer. Left. Ferris. Wheel. Pass. Through. Swing. Do that a couple times. Pretty soon the last time through. Heads. And. And. <laughs> or whatever you want. They're participating again. You can do a lot of different calls. That's just one. How many here have ever heard Barnacle Bill the Sailor? Dumb, isn't it? Really dumb. But you know, if I do that one, I keep getting requests for that thing. Why? And in Barnacle Bill the Sailor, you know, it's bow to your partner, bow to your corner. Who hasn't heard Barnacle Bill? Anybody? Oh, you got to hear it. That's just what it is, old timers. <laughs> Now, I've already warned them that this is tough, but you guys have learned better than you ever have learned before, and I'm sure you can handle this record. It's not coming through very good, but... Then it's bow down to your corner, bow down to the girl across, swing, no, bow to the one that's left alone. Oh, swing your partner round and round, the barnacle be the sailor. Problem and take you around the town, you know, so it picks up like that. Now, the next time, don't worry about sequence or anything on this. Just think fun, okay? So they're, they're just promenading around like crazy. Then you go like, uh, head to ladies, chain across. Side to ladies, stay right there. They've already tried the right thing, you know. And then you say, well, okay, move up and back. Now everybody... Get ready. And they can be just standing. It doesn't matter. And you say, well, swing the girl straight across from Barnacle Bill. Let's say, you imagine what happens? They get there. Somehow the guys get, but they have fun. The idea is, I'll tell you, everybody's got smiles. Everybody's laughing. Everybody's going crazy. And they'll, in, they'll ask that. So do we get too fancy in our calling sometimes? Just be fun. They're all, all they're asking us is say, can we have some fun? Okay. What is fun? You might tell, I, Ray Granger, you know what? He reads from the book every time he has a lesson. Now, his book is a joke book. It's just a little one-liner joke. I'm going to read from the book now. He says, and you know, he reads one joke. A lot of people go, oh, oh, oh. But you know, next week, they're all out telling that joke to all their friends. Did they have fun? <laughs> you know, some of what we hear sometimes not the same as what we do. So, and there's lots. Spontaneous. You'll see things on the floor. Okay? Now, I've used up my time, and I don't want to go way, way long. So what I do, I've got a few more ideas here. And if we have time at the end, and if you'd like to hear some more ideas on singing, call, craziness, fun stuff, it almost goes into after party, but it really isn't. It's square dancing. I'll tell you about that. But to finish, what I'm saying is you as a caller, watch the dancers' faces. Create a smile and a laugh and keep them dancing. And you'll be a success and you'll have fun lessons. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. I learned something from you that I, all these years of calling, on uh, the meaning of fun. Your wife last night did not have fun at the gambling table because she lost. You had fun because you won. I moved to Lake Tahoe 10 years ago and I haven't had fun yet. <laughs> Our next uh, presenter has been square dancing 31 years. 
He also has been calling for 30 of those years. He's an accredited caller coach. He holds regular classes in Sacramento. He and his wife, Joanne, is Joanne here? He and his wife, Joanne, operate a square dance store in Sacramento. And one of the most important things that I think he gave me on his resume, he has nine grandchildren. That's an accomplishment. Most important. He also has attended Ed Gilmore's college classes. And he's going to emphasize some of the most important aspects he has found to be successful and acceptable in the fun relationship of teaching classes. Let's give a nice hand to Roger Morris. Roger? Thank you, Bob. I was talking to Tony Oxidine earlier about how impromptu he was in his presentation. And he told me that uh, he was really, really nervous. And I said, you were? You didn't act like it. Well, I have a tendency to be nervous when I talk to people. And a lot of my callers in the callers classes also said that they were nervous when they got up in front of dancers. And one of my answers to my callers when I uh, got to that problem to answer that, I told him, I said, what you do is you get in front of a bunch of people and you just pretend that they're all naked. And then you'll lose, you know, you'll lose your nervousness. And I just want you to know that you're all naked right now. And if you don't believe me, look around, but don't laugh. <laughs> to qualify uh, my teaching capabilities, uh, I want you to know, by the way, I don't lie about anything. Uh, I teach my dancers a lot of rhythm. And uh, I teach with rhythm. And a product of my last dancer's class was all those people you saw last night dancing up on that stage. <laughs> it was hard calling for him too, partner, I'll tell you. Um, I have some credits to, uh, to give first. First to uh, Mr. Jack Murtha, because part of my presentation contains a, uh, a handout that Jack Murtha came up with quite some time ago. Another one uh, credits uh, to Dick Holton and, uh, and to Milt Adams for listening to all the things that I'm going to present here today. They've been my great friends. I'd like to go through, how many here uh, were at all the different teaching sessions? Okay. So we have a few that weren't at the very first and everything. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about what's happened up till now, kind of quickly. The first session, uh, the moderator was Jack Lazary, and I'm just going to capsulize what their part participation was, okay? Jack Lazary, and, and uh, he uh, talked about formation, awareness, and dance practice. And Vaughn Parrish talked as, as a speaker uh, about dancing, doing uh, what we call phantom dancing, or dancing the thing, the figure, or whatever we're going to teach so that we can appreciate the dancer's problems. And to capsulize what Jack Murtha did, always let the dancers experience, uh, experience success and to appreciate the dancer's problems. On the second session, the moderator was George White, and he had one uh, a key to what he taught was to be flexible. The speaker, Brian Murdoch, talked on the art of listening, and the speaker, Jack Murray, talked about conflicting terms and avoiding co conflicting terms. Then we got to the third session, and the moderator was John Jones. And John Jones talked about Oreo cookies. Now, you're going to have to buy the tape to find out what all else he talked about. I appreciated John Jones because I'm a slow listener and he's a slow talker, I tell you that. Isn't he? <laughs> Betsy Gata talked about the use of circles facing couples around the hall and how she used that in her beginner's class or new dancer classes. 
Then we got to Mike Sikorsky, a speaker, and he talked about the use of singing calls to affect the mood of the dance. Also, he talked about three different types of dancers, and they were Super Sam, Art Average, and Bobby Brain Dead. Not Dead Brain. <laughs> I know. <laughs> He also gave us a solution to what to do with uh, Bobby brain dead. I offered a solution that what we do with the fellow that's Bobby brain dead is introduce him to my caller's class. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe something would work. I don't know. The fourth session, of course, is Bob Van Antwerp, the moderator. Uh, I can't say anything about what Bob's done yet. But then we have Jim Hattrick, and I, I'm capsulizing this. I don't know of anyone myself that's more enthusiastic as Jim Hattrick when he presents programs. I've been to his dances and enjoyed them very much. He presented a part about winning and what is fun. I noticed that in attending the session on showmanship and entertaining that there was also a parallel between this, these sessions and that session because they talked in terms of how to make things interesting and so on. Teaching techniques, our, ours of course is the teaching techniques to make classes more fun and their showmanship and entertaining was a parallel key word there would be, uh, I suppose, entertaining. I'd like to uh, go through the, the handouts uh, that we'll have. We're going to be handed out later on. But I'd like to go through this handout that we have. It's based on the name or the term dance, D-A-N-C-E. And because I'm not a very good impromptitude speaker, I'm going to have to read this for you. D, decide content. The program what, program what to teach or to call each evening, week, month, or year. By programming in advance, the session will go smoother for you as a teacher, and being prepared will offer you confidence when you teach. That confidence will be reflected in the dancer or student. Plan your work, work your plan, be prepared to change your plan when necessary. And that comes under the category of mini-programming. A, add meaning. What is taught should be presented in such a manner that is easily understood. When teaching, try to interject information that the student can relate to. Things we do in everyday life can be helpful in transferring information. Walking, shaking hands, opening, sliding doors, following the leader. N, no conflict. If teaching more than one figure or subject, make sure that the bit of data that does not, one bit of data does not conflict with another. In order to avoid negative transfer of information, stay clear of teaching figures that sound alike feel alike, parentheses, body flow, uh, i.e., wheel and deal, Ferris wheel, box and net, curly cue, wheel around, backtrack, and sometimes slip the clutch and shoot the star. They might conflict. C is care a lot. Take the time to, and have the patience to teach thoroughly, explore various ways of teaching in order that the subject might be easy, may have an easier time, the student may have an easier time of accepting the subject matter. Be thorough, be patient, be kind. Evaluate is E. After each evening, week, month, or year, take the time to evaluate your program, and it, an honest evaluation of your program can lead to improvement that you might find it easier, an easier approach to use 
and in presenting figures. Never be afraid to try new techniques. And that's in a flyer that we're, we'll give out later on. I have some key words that I would like to uh, read and, and uh, perhaps these words will help us in our teaching and, and in creating fun. One of the things uh, that I think that we should be as callers is prompt at a dance. Now, I don't know how you could say, well, how does that attach to being fun? Well, one of the things that happens, if you're prompt, you're there before the dancers, you've got your equipment set up, you uh, become relaxed, and be becoming relaxed helps you to have the uh, ability to present material, and the dancers recognize that, in an easier manner that they can have more fun and prepared I have relaxed the caller being relaxed also relaxes the dancer thus creating a good learning atmosphere you know uh, we've been talking a lot and using the term fun and I'd like to say something at this point I believe that callers use choreography to create interest and humor to create fun. I hope that makes sense. We can, a lot of times, we can use choreography and keep the dancer. That also keeps the dancer. There's people that have varying degrees of fun. What's fun for one is not necessarily fun for another. Be thorough. Explode, explore possibilities that lead to dancers' understanding. Enthusiastic. It's a two-way street. If you're enthusiastic at a dance or when you're teaching, the dancers respond in kind and it seems to snowball. I was talking to a caller that has, is very fortunate in having some enthusiastic, enthusiastic dancers that that actually gets him up before he really gets to going. Creative, new patter, and communicate. Patience, take time to teach. Styling, style the dancers so they become proud of their dancing, not their level. Alert, be, a, be aware of the situations that might alter your program. There's times to teach and there's times to let the dancers relax as, as Jim said earlier. Be sure to praise your dancers. Pretty hard to have fun with a guy that you already put down two or three times, isn't it? I found out something in, psycho uh, in the uh, child psychology. It said that it uh, what I had explored said that if you it takes four positive statements to erase one negative statement so if we can keep away from negative statements and everything positive things will work very well for us at our classes and last hospitable talk shake hands and say hello as Jim was mentioning at the last and I was told we have 20 minutes. And I was very happy to be on the program with Jim Hattrick because when I run out of things to do, he's got a button on his back you push that says talk, and he can take over. Uh, we, I think, will have some opportunity to uh, perhaps show how we can put fun in our teaching and have some participation from you a little later. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. If you happen to notice that your neighbor might be napping, will you nudge him at this time, please? <laughs> it's tough after having lunch, and I know this is the worst time of all sessions to come in after lunchtime and to have to keep people awake, you know. And the record player's not too loud either. I have a few attitudes that I'd like to hitchhike on what these two gentlemen have spoken. Maybe a little few more specifics. 
For example, we used to have the name of Sicilian Circle. Sicilian Circle to me meant one couple facing another couple in a circle, which you can utilize all of your movements from mainstream plus whatever in the single circle, in the Sicilian Circle move. For example, you can do scoot backs, you can do walk and dodge, pass you on to the next swing through, etc. These have been very enticing for me in my beginner's classes, and they seem a lot quicker when we do this. I also invite, I like to invite other classes, if my class is large enough, there is large enough, in a local setting to join our class with us at times, or we'll take the class and join them at their class level. It's, it's a very good assist to have them listen to some other caller. Uh, now and then I will put on called records of other callers using basic movements or mainstream movements of the records that I have, and I will get out and dance with the class at the same time while these are being produced or being presented on a call side. Also, I think if you have an opportunity to visit with your class or have regular members attend with them to the new dancer hoedowns, which I'm not going to take much time on that. Go with them after the class is over with. Have a spot of tea with them or a cup of coffee or a piece of pie. Uh, sit down and, and talk with them. Be one of them. Now, some things that you may not think they're having fun with because they're not smiling is not necessarily true. Usually, a lot of people will smile when they're having a good time. A lot of people smile just because they see somebody else doing it. But a lot of times, people are enjoying themselves immeasurably, but they really are not showing it through their actions of smiling. So you have to contend with this. This is normal. I've said this for years of all the classes I've taught, that the, my first three nights of a beginner's class, and I like to call new dancers instead of beginners, is I will try and check the facial expressions on the men particularly the first three nights. If I'm not satisfying those men, they're not coming back. But if I can sell those men the first three nights of classwork, he's going to bring the woman back because she has usually brought him to the class. So look at the expressions on the men's faces. I like to use a lot of scatter promenades during class time. I like to use ladies chain three quarters, get a new girl, hits pass through, go on to a new square. I mix a lot. I like a lot of mixers, and I do simple mixers, and I do a lot of them in circles. Uh, and you can teach so much from circles if you'll take the time to do it. Also, don't be afraid to sit down with your class members during break time and ask them of their problems. A lot of times they are not going to say on the floor to you, hey, I didn't get that last move. But on the other hand, if you talk to them individually at the class break time, find out what their feelings are. Also, I take time at first of some class nights to let them explain how they were attracted to square dancing. I like to know how they were attracted. What brought them into the hall? Was it their neighbors or what was it? This way you find out a lot of things. If possible and feasible, and we all cannot do this, and equipment is available, I would like to videotape some of my sessions and bring it back and show them about 10 or 15 or 20 weeks later to see what they look like at first and what they look like at this time, and I hope they look better. You can never tell. <laughs> Make some kind of a fun, F-U-N, fine, just for the fun of it, if they have left their badges at home or something. I don't mean a sheriff, but uh, you can make up some fun finds that they will have fun with. I like to have inviting music playing when they enter the hall. I like to have the music, the sound of music when they walk towards the hall. That's not, they're hearing music. Also, sometimes have individual class members explain what they learned last week of the new basic that was presented. And it's interesting to hear them explain what they learned when they have to stand before the class and explain what they learned. And then it's more fun, to me, is to have a square dance, the basic, while the others are watching, 
And if we, let's say we taught scoot back. And so you get up there and you call a couple of three or four scoot backs, and then you have the rest of the class members give them a rating of a one, two, or three, just for the fun of it. You know. Yeah. Give them grade cards. Usually they'll all say this. You know. They always give them that until they get up. Then the rest of them give them this. I sometimes use, have used cotton gloves. And on the left hand, I have left and I have right on this. And it's written out in big letters. And if so one person's having a hard time using a left hand movement, I'll make him wear that left glove for the first two or three next tips or something like that. Just for the fun of it. They have a kick out of that. Ask them... What is fun to them? Like Jim said, fun to them may be something entirely different. Fun for them may be the fact that they are actually associating with somebody that, that they have never met before and they're sitting and having a cup of coffee with them. That may be the most enjoyable time they've had all week. It might be like Jim said. It might be learning a figure. It might be the music you're presenting. So ask them and have them stand up in front of the class and tell them, what is that you have? What made? What is the fun part of this? Enjoy them, and show it. Motivate them through the way that you show your enthusiasm. I don't care if you've got a sour stomach that night or not. You still have to show some motivation and some feeling for that group and have a good time with it. You know, I didn't come prepared. You can tell. Also, I say don't temper your class instruction to, ad to accommodate the better dancers. Let the dancers feel that they are important. They are important. If they're not there, you don't have a job. They don't need you. And if your leadership has gone astray, they'll go across the street or down the block to somebody else. And don't think that you have a hold on the dancers that they are my dancers. They are not your dancers. They are there because it's a recreational activity, and they come for the sociability and the music and everything else. But the minute you start thinking they're my dancers, you're on the wrong track. Putting your dancers in a, your new dancers especially, in a have-to situation is not good. They must have that enjoyable sensation of accomplishment easily if possible. Don't be a caller that gimmicks your dancers or is always catching them off guard with catchy gimmicks. I hate a gimmick caller, personally. Demonstrate your enjoyment through your mic presence. When I say mic presence, I'm trying to say that you have a sense of having mic ability that you can really show them you mean what you're saying when you're instructing. You have to have that feeling for them that they know what you're saying. Don't, overlay, oh, don't overload them and don't pressure them too quickly. It takes away the fun and ends up making work for them which they really do not need. I had a bank president in one of my classes one night and he came up to me and he said, uh, you know, I, I'm enjoying the class because it's fun. And I said, what is it? Why you said it? He said, well, each week, I make decisions on money matters for a whole week. When I come to class, I don't like to make decisions for two and a half hours. And it, it struck home with me, because a lot of them are coming for that sensation of relaxation and recreation and enjoyment. And if you have to make them make decisions all night, they're not going to enjoy it. Use what ability you have to try and entertain them. But if you're not good at the entertaining level, don't force your entertainment on them if you're not good at it. I don't think you need a lot of poor jokes to get by. I think you have to really stress this, that if you're not a good joke teller, don't bore them with your jokes. Go to other callers' classes and see what you can steal from him if he's doing a good job and they're coming back to him. Maybe you can steal something. I steal everything. I've never written a figure yet or a new movement. I steal everybody else's. There is really not a cookbook recipe for fun. And you have to be enthused yourself to portray this to your dancers. Jim talked about singing calls. 
Uh, I personally enjoy them very much, as you most of you know, and I've used so many different kinds, but I do not use only one type. I, if it go for, maybe you can go from the, the lilting melody type, or you can go to the uh, Western theme, or you can go to anything, but use a variety. Don't use the same kind all the time. Also, challenge them with challenging, challenging them without pressure can be fun for them if done properly. When dancers don't laugh, I said, don't worry about it, because some are still enjoying it. Consider party nights occasionally, when the club can join in a fun time. And don't, don't do anything heavy that night. Be relaxed with them. One suggestion I received is, you know how some will groan when they hear you're going to give a new basic? Oh, don't tell me you're going to get a new, new movement tonight. We just had two last week. Well, one caller said what he did was trying to make it a fun thing. He would have them, after they heard you was going to learn, well, we learned scoot back last week. Now we're going to learn how to do uh, recycle. Whenever they hear it's going to be a new movement, he had them all clap. So they'd all clap because they're going to hear a new movement. And he finally got them to everybody who was teaching a new basic. Well, they'd all clap. So it's a different method anyway. I never tried this. One suggestion, having different squares individually dance the new movement after being taught, like I said. And another fun thing which we've used is, for example, if you have Alaman left, count that as number one. Do, sa, do is number two. Right and left, three is number three. Ladies chain, number four. Call it a couple, three times, and then tell them you're going to call it by the numbers. All right, do number two. Do number three. Number one, number four. You get good reaction from your new dancers. Good reaction. As I sit back there and look at one of my good time friends by the name of Bruce Johnson, I think of uh, things we used to do at a seal mar, especially when we were some of these people. We used to do a little thing, which was a singing thing, and we'd. Uh, Bruce had so much talent with the piano. And with new dancers, if you have that instrumental ability, you can do a lot of things. But if you don't have it, leave it alone. Leave it alone. Where's Bruce? Oh, I thought it was Bruce back there. I'm sorry. I thought it, was, it looked like Bruce Johnson sitting back there. I beg your pardon. It's not Bruce. You're Bruce's brother. Well, Bruce is here anyway. I saw him earlier. I'm sorry. I thought it was Bruce back there. May I require, request that you as the caller don't be too silly with your class and lose your credibility. Sometimes this can be done. Don't be afraid to poke fun at yourself. The dancers love it. I like to use a cardboard teaching situation which will show them ahead of time with a cardboard on the stage giving what's going to be taught that night and what they have already learned. It's a check-off method. It's very advantageous if you've never used it. It keeps them abreast of what's going on. They say, well, I forgot how to do this one here, which is walk and dodge. Would you go back through it with me? Which we do. Also, some nights, nothing works. Nothing works. I don't care what you do. It just doesn't work. You sweat blood all night. And I usually find this about the seventh week of class. And I can't tell you why. Of, of years of teaching, it's between the sixth and eighth lesson that I feel like there's a downfall. I don't care. You can't even have them bow to your partner. They bow the wrong one. <laughs> so that night, I know it's coming. Either the moon's full or something. So the minute that happens, I forget about all the teaching aspects. I go back to just doing nothing but what they like to do. Just have a lot of fun, and it pays off for you. Well, I should skip lesson number seven. Yeah, that'd be good for me. <laughs> no, I know that. These are a few things I think maybe might help you. We hope. Now, we have approximately... Uh, 25 minutes, 24 minutes, and I'd like to ask Roger or Jim if you'd like to utilize the record player one more time. You need it for any reason. If you'd, like, <laughs> uh, if you'd like to do this, let's do it right now that we're going to get to you for questions and answers. Jim, you want to, uh, Roger, you want to use the, this for anything? Jim? Girl, you park 
Hooker boxing at. Girl Starlet and Sire said it's once around like that. Go so low when you get back home, once around and don't be slow. Then I'll man you caught a girl in a grand old rider left. Blue and brown shirt. That was Bob Van Antwerp, and it was his record years ago. Uh, not very many. No. But it, talk about being progressive or ahead of your time. That was done without the ability of... Oh, this was like an overdub rather than the type of t uh, machines that we have today. And I thought it was far ahead of its time. I just wanted you to hear it. It's a great record. It's got a figure that nobody in the world can do. <laughs> yeah, wheeling, dealing a quarter more. <laughs> uh, Jim, you have anything you want to use record player before we open it up? Would you like to? Uh, let's open it up for you people now, and we'll accept uh, any answers from you. We'll listen. <laughs> any questions? Please give us your name and where you're from, please. My name is Lauren Cochran uh, from Medford, Oregon. I don't have a question really, but. I stumbled onto something in my own class the last couple of years, and I'd like to pass it on to the rest of you. You might be able to use it. But recently, uh, I'm to the point where I taught walk and dodge. And uh, I don't know if the rest of you have had that problem, but essentially you always have somebody in the square that wants to turn around on walk and dodge instead of sliding over. Right. So when I teach walk and dodge now, as soon as I teach it, I say, Nobody ever turns around on a walk and dodge. I take the music off and I say this, and I have the class repeat it. Then I walk them through it again, and I say, Nobody ever turns around on a walk and dodge. And then I dance it a while, and of course, every once in a while, somebody turns around and everybody goes, points at them, and they say, You turned around, didn't you? <laughs> and they get a little red-faced, but you know, after the first week, there's no problem with walk and dodges anymore. And about the third week, I'll say, uh, I'll call walk and dodge, and I'll lift the needle, and I'll say, oh, you guys did so great. That was perfect. And they'll all say, yeah, nobody turned around on a walk and dodge. So it, it works. <laughs> D yes, Roger. In Jack Murtha's presentation, by the way, uh, he mentioned the fact of, of setting up a situation that people could recognize, and one of them was... Uh, putting a sliding door in front of the girl's going to open a sliding door on a van it's spring loaded so she's got to really hold on to it and he's going to load the van with groceries now my group is more affluent so I just have it uh, ladies you're going to open a sliding door and I'm going to carry in the TV but anyway that's been mentioned earlier but it's sure a good idea to be able to have fun with that by uh, also, giving things, uh, uh, talking about things that dancers can relate to, and that was part of the subject. Next gentleman. Yes, my name is Al Martz. I'm from Vancouver, Canada. And I would like to ask Bob, what do you do about uh, uh, square angels that like to teach a class for you? I call them square devils myself, but... Uh, uh, I'm glad you asked. Number one... I have enough people, I don't even call them square angels, I just call them assistants that help me out there. But the week prior to the instruction starting of a class, I have those people come and we meet at a restaurant and have dinner together. And at that time, I explain them what I expect of them. And I expect them not to talk at all while the instruction is going on. And I will have them assist these dancers during the breaks. I will have them at the door to assist when the people come in to greet them, but I have them know that I am still the instructor for this class, and they will listen to what I am instructing as I will not need them again if this occurs. That's pretty harsh, but it's, it works. Yes, sir. Yeah, I walk Cole from Utah's. That's a contraction for Utah and Arizona. <laughs> I was going to ask, where is that? <laughs> Uh, fun is a very personal definition. I know folks that can have fun at a lynching. <laughs> and back second, to the wagon for you. <laughs> second point is is to take a page out of the round dance teach, demonstrate, 
I remember Angus McMoran once told me it took him 20 years to learn to get off the stage and down on the floor to teach. And it, it's a tremendous help to see the action done by so-called experts. Thanks. Thank you, Walt. Next, I've heard of you before. You're the one that left your badge at home or something they couldn't find. They had to announce it. Yeah. <laughs> I knew I was going to get that. By God, I had to get some recognition somehow, Bob, so I thought that would be the best way to do it. And I got my name announced, so you see, I got something Well, tell them your name. My name is Harvey Romelli, and I'm from Red Bluff, (laughs) California. And, Bob, I'm going to direct this question to you. Uh, After we've got a beginner's class going, and uh, say we're halfway through it or whatever, and normal procedures are, we come in, and I think most of us try to loosen our dancers up with something they know and make them relaxed, you know, and get them going. Are there any statistics out to show us what time of during the course of a two-and-a-half-hour class they are most acceptable to teaching new figures? Is it in the middle of the evening? Is it at the end of the evening? Or is it in the beginning of the evening? What are your recommendations towards that? I'll give you mine, then I'll have Jim, and I'll have Roger give theirs, too, because uh, we may all have difference. I feel that your first portion of the evening is spent, the first time they walk on the floor that night, is you'll give them something with a little enjoyment of fun. Maybe a simple singing call that they can do. Then I start in with a little review period. Then about the middle of the evening is when I start any kind of teach. I'll teach for the first, uh, maybe if I'm going to teach two movements, maybe three at that night. I'll do it in the middle of the evening. Then I start slacking off, gradually letting them keep dancing, keep dancing what we have taught also what they've learned with a singing call. But I don't try to teach anything right off the bat. But one thing I have found very successful in the last three years, believe it or not, after 40-some years of teaching, that I have taught this, learned this last two years, is before you start teaching, uh, in whatever the basic is, have your class members sit down, and you take one square, and you walk them through this movement while they can see it, because the visual presentation is, is 100% uh, very helpful to me. Okay, I'll ask Jim. You want to add to that? Second tip. <laughs> well, this one I think. No, no I, it depends on my warm-up tip. I've got to get them under control. Okay? And when they're moving well, and I've covered what we've had in the previous lesson, now it could be the second tip, it could be the third tip, depending on how they react could be the full moon night, could be the third tip, could be the half moon, could be the second tip. I get them under control first, then I teach it. And I also do as Bob does on moves. Circle to a line is a very good example of it. I put a square out there and those little finer points of how the boy raises his arm, does he raise it after you've circled half? Or she start raising her arm before he gets there so the girl can comfortably go under the arm. And so I, when they see it, then, oh, I see, gee, I could think about the girl's part too. Seeing is great too. But not when they're ready for it. Thank you. I have one more question I'd like. Oh, excuse me. Go ahead. I do what both them guys do. No, one of the things that I do that that was taught to me by uh, two or three other callers, and this little warm-up thing, and it's kind of an interesting thing, even even at uh, the plus level, um, I have a little routine of having them join hands and circle to the left, 16 counts and I have them circle to the right 16 counts and I have the girls go into the center and back in eight counts and I have the men go into the center and back in eight counts and I have them come back and promenade full promenade is 16 counts it takes up the complete measure uh, in a singing call and then I elect one leader and he's the person that's going to tell everybody else where to go on the timing when it gets to 16 and I have those dancers actually count and it really helps to get the dancers used to the music and dancing and that sort of thing although it's not difficult at all and they have a feeling of accomplishment and enjoy it very very much and before I start teaching and I also look for um, opportunities to teach there's times when people do not want to be taught we've already talked about that but I might just then teach two or three tips, in two or three tips, and then the rest of the evening relax and dance what we've learned. Does that answer that part? Yeah, that's fine. Now, the question was, that I, if I understood correctly, you, do you introduce singing calls right at the early stages, of, uh, or what, what stage do you? Yes, I right do. Right at the beginning. I do the first night. 
Thank you. Personally. Uh, and they're not doing very much, but they're they're here listening to music. Yes. George Holzer, Aptos, California. I noticed that Jim mentioned that he uses singing calls, and you just mentioned that you do, and also that you mentioned a little earlier that during the evening, before the dancing starts, that you have music going while the dancers are coming into the hall. And I noticed that most of the hoedowns and most evening programs that most callers play music during the interval between dances or between tips. But I did notice that one gentleman who was here at the microphone said something that happens quite often and it strikes me as being wrong, and that is he lifted the needle off while he was talking, teaching walk and dodge. I believe that if we're taking, talking to dancers or teaching dancers to dance to music, then we should keep the music on even when we're explaining movement. Then lightly in the background, we've got a cute little control right there for it. I would just like to suggest that every caller here try keeping the music on while you're teaching all the time, even in the background there, so that they learn to listen through the music to their dancing. Thank you. That is the basis they're coming, really. You said music. Yes. Yes, I'm Tim Pratt. I'm from San Diego, California. And I just thought I'd share with you, uh, I, I agree 100% with you. I start them with singing calls the first night of the we, we I try and keep my classes as, as close to a fun-level club dance. And I start out the first night. We do singing calls right up the first night. But uh, one of the problem areas I've had in, in classes, and I think I've overcome it, is uh, whenever we get to figures like right and left grand, weave the ring, anything where we've got several hands or, we, or people we have to count, I get my dancers counting out loud. I get them involved. They, they have success with completion of the figures. Uh, when I teach a right and left through, I will actually have them repeating while they're doing it. Right hand pull by courtesy turn out loud in unison. And it, it helps them, it helps them, it, it gets them involved, it keeps the, the fun of the evening going, and it gives them the sense of accomplishment. Thank you. We have some handouts, but I don't want you to rush up now because you'll be reading them while the rest of the guys are talking. So uh, just, we'll give, we have some handouts for you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Milt Adams, Jukaya, California. And I just wanted to share a little thing just, just to show you're never too old to learn. Um, I've been calling and teaching dancers for 33 years, and it was just a couple of years ago I discovered that when you teach an alamandar, if you have the ladies chain across, you only have to do it once before you get your partner back. <laughs> and they are at a, at a stage where that's a, it's important for them and more fun uh, if, they don't, if they're not trapped in this alamandar situation. And for about 31 years, I did it from a static square and had to go twice before they, they got their partner back, and some of them didn't make it. Thank you. That's my friend, Milt Adams, who is a very quick learner. <laughs> yes, sir. Jim Gibson, Canby, Oregon. I just want to say, sometimes you get the impression some of these guys don't always practice what they preach. But uh, when I first started calling, I attended one of Jim Hattrick's classes and audited it all the way through. And he does it, and he makes it work, and it's fun. How much did you pay him, Jim, to say that? <laughs> yeah, and one thing is, I'm mean, listening to your questions, too, to think about this. Uh, you were talking about Alamandar, and you were talking about walk and dodge, how to teach. And we had a couple other teachers here, too. Remember, again, that the thing that we're talking about here in classes is fun, not teaching. We've got to put more dance into our lessons and less less teaching and working and there's a point where I know you're looking at your list saying gee I got three more things to teach so I know we only got a half hour left and we won't have time to dance but I'm going to teach them to you and here they come you know and it's walking dodging it's alum and darn it you know that's not accomplishing what we want and and I'm just saying more get into dancing and and you know just one thought here I've got it right here on the I want to show this to you how many of you ever have to sing happy birthday to the dancer have you ever called a square dance happy birthday to him how many here anybody you can do it listen do you, do you all have this DECA happy birthday record? It's one you can buy, okay? The beginning happy birthday is just happy birthday. And everybody sing happy birthday, da 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 da, okay? But when it gets into the music, there's two complete singing call figures. So you can sing it to them. Today is Frank Gonzalez's birthday. So it would go like this. 
Ten square feet you count them four Deep there Do the sun, do that corner girl Swing through Boy run down the line Then a right on left two and turn the girl and down Well flutter wheel full around Hey then slide through Swing the corner girl and promenade As you promenade say Happy birthday dear Frank Happy birthday Now there'll be another figure just like that with more music Take any single call figure you want And the ending is Sing again and raise their square And they'll sing to him again So it might be another way to add fun to your happy birthday How old is that record? That was an old one That's an old one, isn't it? Yeah <laughs> Next gentleman Thank you I'm Gordon Melton from Point Heart, California I have one question that may be pertaining But um, I've had trouble in a couple of classes that I've had That say I have a couple or a couple of couples that don't seem to be getting what I'm get, what I'm teaching, and I have a tendency to keep going, keep going till I think they at least understand it a little bit. And I'm wondering if sometimes if maybe we shouldn't back off a little sooner and come back at a different time. And I'm wondering, uh, I'm asking your opinion in this. Is something I think I've been doing wrong? I wish we could say that none of us had a problem that way. I am sure that all the years that we have taught that there always has been that one, two, or three couples. I know one couple that I gave seven diplomas out to, but they never were thought, tossed out of a class. But what I have done, and I'll let the other gentlemen react also, what I've done many times is to talk to them personally off the side, interject my philosophy of helping them, not wanting to lose them, on the same token I have asked them to come early to class, and I'll help them, or stay a little bit later and have some angels help me. But I think what we are sometimes, I don't know who said it, but some, sometimes we push our dancers out. We work hard to get them into the class, then we hurry up and push them out. And we can't afford to lose dancers nowadays. They are our most prized possessions that we have as our dancers. Yes, ma'am. Oh, well, you guys want to respond? Jim? Roger? I had a situation similar to that, and I found one thing that really relaxed those people that I had two couples. And we went over to their house in their garage in the atmosphere that they felt comfortable and worked with them. And it seemed to help a little bit, if you understand what I mean. They may not feel comfortable being in front of people by coming early, you know, if you're working with the knuckleheads or whatever. <laughs> uh, and I don't mean that derogatorily, but the people that are slow, and they, by going to their house and working with them, if possible, it helps to relax them. Did we, did we really answer your question all the way? No. That I was, didn't think we did. No, uh, I was meaning completely a different thing. Okay. I was meaning whenever, uh, while you're teaching, say your time is getting too far, you've got too much floor time on teaching a move, that was my... Okay. And maybe dropping that and coming back later in the evening or next week or something. This is what I meant. I didn't mean what you're saying. I there. think what you what you just said is what you should do. Yeah. This is what I haven't been I doing. Think you should after do that. all the sessions that I've been here this weekend, this is what I say. I think I've been doing wrong, and I'm going to practice a little bit and see how it works. I think it's what you should do. Yes, ma'am. We have about uh, three minutes left, please. I'm Dottie Swenson from Portland, Oregon. And one thing that I did want to mention to you, I had a man in one of my classes one time who was a real estate salesman and he told me that when he went to real estate school they told him that when he went to sell property and this should apply to square dance teaching as well they told him that the attendance span for adults was five minutes and for him to then leave let them think then come back to it and i thought maybe you'd like to know that thank you very much good point <laughs> Well, many people you think cannot be taught, but I have had a blind person go through my class. And the blind person went through just like the regular dancers, and believe it or not, that blind person knew where she was going to be at all times where the other dancers didn't sometimes. You could depend on her. We're going to close this session by asking Roger if you have an, uh, one more comment before we close. Nothing? Jim, do you have another comment before we close? Again, just remember, lessons are not lessons. They are a dance also. Just add a few less moves. 
And also anybody can be taught, like Bob says. Only problem with the blind person that he taught is going to the potluck line the last time. They were knocking food off the table with their cane. And somebody came along and asked them if they could help them. And the blind person just said, no, I'm just looking. I just, uh, I just want to take the opportunity to thank uh, Bob Van Antwerp for having me on this panel. Thank you all very much. Thank you. A great audience. Thank you for coming. These are handouts up here. Please take what you want. Leave tips.